stuff. Because people, it's very easy to not understand, and this is what I love about politics too, understand how change happens. I'm on a mission to find that one poem that means everything. You're watching Kenya. Oh yeah, he just left? Yeah. Yeah. You know Kevin Nelson? He was here in September last week. Oh yeah! I know him! Alright, cool. So, um... Let's do this thing. You want to interview Daniel? Uh, I will, I will. Like, we'll start with um, just a short video on a couple topics, I guess, since we have you guys here, Mr. Composition included. I'm Kenyo. Daniel Tennis is running for Congress. Let's get a, a clap for him. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's our man. Not that the applause was for the recording or anything, but it was for authenticity and support. Congratulations, sir, on the effort. It's a big deal. Um, and we'll talk more about that and how that plays out for you. Um, but yeah, so first things first, um, I guess I'm gonna be the, the sole audience member asking the questions, but I'm gonna bring up four people and we're gonna talk about a couple issues and just kind of hear where the ranges are and try to get a feel, because I think that will help be helpful um, in connecting people. My name is Kenyo, K-I-N-Y-O, and I'll be your host. No applause necessary. <laughs> but okay, if you want to clap, cool. Okay, but anyway, um, so yeah, this is, this is going to be fun. We're out here in Corpus Christi. Um, we'll learn some basic things, but I'm going to bring up four um, panelists, people to um, talk about this. Oh no, three, sorry, three panelists, people to talk about um, some of the issues, and then um, we'll switch it up and we'll bring Daniel Tennis up here himself to talk with... Um, some of the panelists. So first we're gonna bring up um, Victor Hinojosa, local community organizer. Um, Sean Flanagan, also community organizer. Patron of the event tonight. Also has a legendary history in Texas and uh, in the US and the United States. Uh, then we're gonna bring up Mr. Composition, um, who's, a, who's a rapper. Local musician. So we're gonna get some. Uh, I'm gonna hand you guys the mic. I'm just gonna be basically screaming questions at you, and then if anyone else has any ideas. But um, we, we have two topics set ahead that we wanted to talk with. And you guys can kind of move forward a little bit, kind of be around this table. Um, two topics that we kind of wanted to touch on that I thought would be a good starting point. But right now we just want to talk about enfranchising the youth vote. I think that's what everyone's talking about these days. And I want to hear how that fits into your ideology and what you're doing. Short answers, but um, how do you feel um, that's important to you and how do you feel you're working on that? And I'll grab my beer so I can. That's salute to the Twisted right Saloon. <laughs> so uh, yeah, how, how important is that to you and how are you going about doing that? Well, I think right now, um, one of the most important things about the youth now is how they are being tempted into the idea that socialism is the answer to help them. Um, right now, a lot of the youth has kind of um, believed that socialism is the answer that this country needs to go in order to help them. It's become an idea that the government is there to help you, the government is there to take care of us and to provide for us and to basically be a better suitor and a better god than pretty much the people in the free market itself. Uh, one thing that I think the Libertarian Party right now, what we have tried to do is um, to basically just remind the youth about um, our greatest document that this country has ever created. It's the best document in the world it is our United States Constitution. And uh, we have just basically, we're trying to remind the youth that it is liberty and it is basically whenever you take government out of the marketplace when you have free trade and we start giving more power to the people that is basically what it's necessary to make sure that the country and the state and pretty much local communities can actually come together and prosper more um, that's just basically one part of it is just 
getting the youth to understand what our founding principles are um, instead of just falling into this idea that government can just basically provide and give you all the answers. Well, in reaching out to the youth, I think it's in their self-interest. In other words, when I started coaching at the a &M Corpus in 2000, we went to school there, it cost like 8,000 bucks. The government's taken over the student loan program, they're running all this stuff, now it's costing 18 years later, it's going to cost you over 20000 and you're getting exactly the same thing, the difference being the government's been involved. And as the Libertarian Party, we believe in the power of the individual, individual freedom, individual responsibility, and we're hoping that the youth of America starts looking out more for themselves and realizing that, hey, you are the most important person that's going to be taking care of you and your destiny. That's what we want the people who will join us to seize the destiny to be individuals and think for yourselves and think outside the box. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. I, especially with the youth, you know, we are coming from a spot where, you know, we're, it's kind of just like your relationship with your parents. Like they can only do but so much before you're going to have to do it yourself. And, you know, we live in a day and age, I mean, this country in general, like, this is something out of nothing, you know, and that's something that continues to build up through all different types of races, all different types of communities. And when looking at the youth, you know, like I said, it's self-interest. So if a lot of the youth is not thinking that, you know, politics or anything is important to them, they're just not gonna show up when we see how powerful their absence is. But what is really, you know, giving them the information as far as like why this is important why is it that you want to participate in the parties and you know different things like that so i think you know in this day and age empowering the youth with knowledge you would think in the information age that it would be automatic but it's something that has to be taught you know the patients from as far as those before us you know have to be able to get that information and to a point that we understand and just show the importance you know someone isn't going to use a calculator if they don't deem that it's necessary you know so same thing as far as with politics i think that if you know if there isn't a um if there isn't something put into place to where the kids the youth can understand why it's important um then it's always going to fall short All right, awesome. After that first section, I want to do something because I'm being mindful of light. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up um, and introduce the candidate himself, Mr. Daniel Tunis. Oh, you guys can stay up there. So I'm sorry, everyone can stay. Mr. Sean, you can, I know, defrog you for no reason. Um, so what I kind of want to do, oh, awesome, is, is touch on uh, another subject. I'm going to let you lead first talk about the last subject um, in Franchise and Youth Vote, and then if you could also touch on the second one. And the second one is um, the Reformation or the, um, <clears throat> the coming to terms of where we are when it comes to policing. I think that's a huge thing on, on people's minds. I think it affects a lot of regular people, traffic violations, speeding tickets, those kinds of things. Um, and I don't know anyone, if anyone, if everyone here is uh, familiar with, I'm sure, but not everyone watching is familiar with uh, some of the smaller cities in Texas and driving through them. There can be some predatory policing and stuff like that for good reason. They use it to raise money, different things. This might be some opinions. I might be saying some stuff wrong, so I'm going to stop before I go any further. But I'm sure you have some stuff on your platform already regarding policing and, and what you think going forward with that. But yeah, if you could start with the youth vote and then go into that, and then I'd love to hear. Um, from a couple of you guys, what you think about policing, how that situation affects you, what we can do. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm a high school teacher. I've been teaching high school for the past 18 years. I'm, I'm uh, uh, very familiar with the attitudes of, of uh, young people this day and age, but also 18 years ago. Um, uh, the lady at the, the bar here is actually uh, former student at the high school I teach at, so I'm, I'm running across them all the time. Uh, we only have six. We have 66 percent of eligible voters who just sit at home. So it's not just a youth problem as far as disinterest in the political. Problem. 
process. It's also uh, with the adult population as well, you know, older adults. And, and uh, from what I hear from most of the people is they're, they're apathetic because no matter what, how they vote, they seem to get the same thing. So a lot of them are staying home. I was, I was uh, uh, talking a little while ago about how uh, our governor, current governor, uh, was elected with 20% of the, the votes. 18% went to Wendy Davis and 1% went to other. So, so really, that's a pretty dismal record as far as voting is concerned. And uh, uh, like I say, most people, and unfortunately, it's rightfully so, feel that they are they are disenfranchised because no matter how they vote, they just get the same thing. If you look at government spending, if you look at the the intrusion on our rights and all these other things, it, it hasn't changed at all. So we're we're voting for and getting getting the same thing, or or not voting and getting the same thing. So really, we get the government we deserve, whether we vote or not. So my message as far as the, the, the youth, young voters and older voters as well, is to look for who represents your views the best, not a party. Because if you vote for a party, you're going to get a party. You're going to get basically mob rule, and that's what we have currently. So look, look at people based on their record how they, who they serve, when they serve, and where they serve prior to running for office. That's, that's a good indicator of their heart. Um, as far as the second question, as far as the policing, uh, I've had many incidents myself. There's a, a town uh, in Brazoria County that I go very slow through because I've got popped more than once, and, and that's exactly what it is, is, is they are they are is a jet, uh, revenue generating system. They have a, a a speed limit sign. It's it's uh, uh, 40 miles an hour through the town. Then it increases to 50 miles an hour. But a block away from that 50 mile an hour speed sign is a 60 mile an hour. And if you're going above 50 miles an hour before you get to that 60 mile an hour sign, you're going to get a ticket. It's a classic speed trap when driving through Santa, it's not just small towns, when driving through uh, 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 Houston, I, I would go there to pick up sheet metal a lot, and um, work construction many years. One time I was getting off of I-10, the speed limit on a ramp off of I-610 or 610 rather, uh, is 35 miles an hour. Every, they had a line of police officers pulling over everyone who was getting on the exit ramp because who can go from 65, 60, 65 miles an hour and then you get on the exit ramp and you have to slam on your brakes to do 35. They pulled everyone who was getting off the exit ramp over. And they, there, was a, there was a neighborhood, and a uh, residential neighborhood, and they had us all lined up and it gave each and every one of us a $120 ticket. One of the, I, a lot of the police officers I talked to, they're not for this. They're being, they're being commanded to do this, basically, it's, it's uh, 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 from, it, as a revenue generator, as you indicated earlier. And uh, there's a lot of other laws that they're not interested in enforcing. They're really interested in protecting us and protecting our rights, doing their constitutional duty. The vast majority of police officers get into it because of that. I talked to a lot of police officers who were very um, disillusioned with the, the field in general, and a lot of them uh, wish that they hadn't gotten into it because of the things that they're made to do. So, so we really, my number one issue as far, and this may sound terribly strange for a libertarian, uh, but my number one concern is the rule of law. And I'm talking about the rule of law as far as us re, uh, reestablishing ourselves as a constitutional republic where our rights come first. And the government's role is to ensure that our rights as individual citizens are protected. And as long as we're not interfering with someone else's rights to, to self-govern and self-determination, then, then the, the law, the government, really has no business interfering with what we're doing. So, so um, I, uh, and I think most police officers would tend to agree with that. Most of the ones I know and speak with 
would tend to agree with that as well. So I hope that answered your question, sir. Yeah, definitely. Is this a cool. training session or what, is, what are we doing? Yeah, we're doing a training session. Yeah. Is this a training session or what are we doing? This is a video. Okay. Do you have a question for Mr. Tennis? You'd like to ask? 16,000 kids in Yemen in the last month. And that's just not right. 16,000. 16,000. I'm going to catch one more question from you. I thank you so much for that and for everyone who came out. Um, but um, what I want to do is wrap it up because you, you touched on a few really big things. We have good questions. I'm sure for a lot of people, they'll hit home because they're very real, lots of things you don't hear about. And for a lot of people, it'll go straight over their heads. Um, and you know, you, you touched on with the opiates. There is a certain, um, there's a lot of art in, in, in politics, and there's a certain um, futility sometimes in fighting some battles. And you know, you know that you can't completely win, but how can you make the best of the situation? And so I just kind of want to sum everything up and talk about um, with your political career. Um, what would you say you would want to be the lasting legacy? What is it that you're shooting for with your time and your energy um, that you're putting into these things? What would you say that legacy, how would you sum that legacy up just so we can get a good idea of what it is you're going for? Thank you. Um, really, one of the biggest reasons why I even came into the race in the first place and doing this in the first place is I have children and grandchildren. So my legacy, as far as, as, far as the, the nation I want to lead, is one where we live a self-determined life. Like with the state, of, the state of Texas can run the state of Texas, our local governments can run the, the local, but ultimately, we are responsible for our own actions and the consequences of those actions. We make our choices, we live by those choices, we help people. And we willingly help people, and we do all the time. We prove it every day. Uh, through Hurricane Harvey, we've seen, and, and the recent hurricane in Florida, uh, uh, we, we see people just coming together and helping each other out continually. This is who we are. I mean, from other states, and, and we, we just are continually doing that. So really, right now, we're, 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 we're facing a lot of division and fear for the purpose of keeping us divided and fearful of each other. So that we are, we are, because uh, uh, if we're divided, we're easily controlled. Yeah. So what, they're, they're, they're fearful. They should be fearing us. Our government should fear us more than we fear them. Yeah. And that I want it to be reversed once again, so that we are the power, and they are their power is diminished. So I want a, a a nation where my children, my grandchildren have the right to live their life as they see fit, spend their money as they see fit, and help and, and help others as they see fit as well. Really, it, it, would, it boils down to just that simple. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, class for Daniel Chittis. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting us collaborate with you on this event. And I, I look forward to seeing you um, continue in your career. But I know there's going to be so much of you at, um, adapting your ideas as you get to practice them and you get to bring out some of them. So I think that's going to be really cool. I look Thank forward you. to it in whatever way um, they do manifest. So the rest of the show is basically going to be two performances. We have Mr. Composition who's here tonight. Well, the last we have Lion Throne that's coming through and they're going to rock the stage. Really cool funk band. So I encourage you guys to at least just make this area of the night. Um, yes, sir. Um, something you traffic often for the next two hours until 10 o'clock when we close. And then um, the goal is to do like, a, like an art auction. I'm still thinking about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, what, what do we got here? We're gonna auction off this bowl right now. Okay, I'm gonna give someone the, the opportunity to win this bowl right now. Um, Yes. Um, I'm also actually going to do a poem. I'm going to do my poem right after this. I'm going to let Mr. Composition set up because um, he's going to take a little bit more time and he's really cool. You guys are going to enjoy that. Um, but first, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna auction off this bowl. Does that sound like fun? Yeah. Anyone who's even slightly interested in that? I wish I could be in the room because this is a night when I would be buying bowls. I might bid myself. Is that, there's no rules against that. No. <laughs> no. All right, cool. So I'm one of the bidders, so, but I'm, I'm above board. I'm going to do everything by rules, okay? I'm not going to cheat in any way. You'll know what my bids are. Um, 
But yes, this, this bull is made by uh, an awesome artist named Beverly Flanagan. And, um, Actually, Johnson. Beverly Johnson? Yep. Unofficially Beverly Flanagan. Mm -hmm. Does she go publicly by Beverly Flanagan? No. At all? No. no? Beverly Johnson. I have to change <laughs> some stuff on some listings. <laughs> I'm listing some of her art in another, <laughs> in another arena. But anyway, um, oh, and Mr. Composition also has his books and CDs. He has two books. He's a self-published author. He sold over 400 copies of his book, uh, Ideas of Illusion. He just goes around to events, sets up. Um, it's a book that he was a collaborative effort with some other local creatives who helped him with the editing. Um, and he's, we're really big into entrepreneurship and building this kind of community stuff. Because people, it's very easy to not understand, and this is what I love about politics too, understand how change happens um, and how those partnerships really come into play and how fragile and small they are and how, um, how big that is when um, different groups of small people link up in order to make something happen. You see that a lot with parties, you know, there's a lot of local chapters of parties, and especially in smaller cities, local chapters can be very small, um, but the effort is much larger, you know. Um, I always think about, because we do a lot of media, uh, and composition, we travel, and some other people that I know, and I think about um, the fact how precious human attention is, you know, if you have um, 10 people's attention, you know, like these companies like Facebook and things like that, they create so much free infrastructure simply because it allows them to do very minimal transactions, marginal transactions on that attention. Yeah. And anyway, so I, I always think about how precious it, precious it is if you have 10 people's attention. It's a really big deal. If you have five people's attention, if you have one person's attention, it's a really big deal, and we can overlook that so easily because we see everyone has one million, two million followers on Instagram or whatever, 10,000 plays on this video, 100,000 plays on that video, and it can kind of distort and make us forget that if we can really provide value to one person's attention while we have it, that could be enough. That is enough in a lot of ways. Anyway, so we're gonna start this bowl at $3, which is my own personal bid. We have a second bid. No family members. <laughs> no family members. Do we have a second bid? Going once? Five? Okay, cool. I'm going to seven. No, 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 hold on. Six. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to six on my bid. Because um, I actually do want it now. <laughs> in, a, in a constructive way. And now I'm going to leave those for next time. Um, art auctions are something I'm going to be doing a lot at my shows. If you come out to San Antonio. Okay. All right. I wasn't going to do everything individually, so. Oh, you got your eye on Yeah, so that way I can just do that item. We'll just do those two. But I'm going to take. I, I won this one for $6. <laughs> Congratulations to me. Round of applause. I killed it. What's the opening bid on the. Uh, what is that? Brown skull? This one? Oh, this is like the this is like the number one item. I don't know. I think the 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 number one bid on this would have to be. Well, you would get to start actually. What would be your opening bid if you don't get challenged? I don't have a lowest bid on it. I mean, twenty five. All right. If that's going to be the opening, that's going to be the opening bid. I will accept the opening bid as the auctioneer. So we're going to start at twenty five on this piece. And basically, if anyone wants another one, we're going to have to do it by, you're going to have to like say it, because uh, I'm not going to do any other ones after this, but 25, is anyone, I was going to jump in, but you started it kind of high, which was pretty good. It was a good defense mechanism. <laughs> Very intelligent. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I actually love it. I was eyeing it. I almost didn't want to bring it when we saw it in the house. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Hopefully. Anyway, we'll talk after whoever wins. So $25 starts it off. Do we have 300? I mean, 30. <laughs> Do we have 30? Is it 25 going to be the closing? I almost want to go in over here, but I, I don't want to put myself in that situation. <laughs> I'm not going to beat you up. This isn't. I was already nice to you. Yeah, that's true. This isn't Pound Stars. I won't do it. Going once, going twice. Sold. It's sold. Woo! 25. Maybe after Mr. Composition, I'll open up another one because Line Throne is going to come through. So these two pieces are sold, but we still have five other items. This one's really cool. 
This is a really cool Christmas ornament. Anyway, oh my gosh, I almost died. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and then I'm gonna let Mr. Composition um, get set up. So definitely come back out here when you hear loud music or just stay out here because it's actually getting pretty nice right now. So that's a good one. Yeah. But you have a tender pink. Get too handsy with it. Awesome. Um, yeah, I guess so. Let me get an official. Just get an actual get actually, a picture. Get an actual purse. <laughs> hey, she get a picture. Now your oh, and your feet show it. They're Longfellow. Woo! <laughs> this is an artistic night. Um, it's been a long year. I'm gonna read a short poem. Oh wait, no, never mind, it's a long poem. It's not a short poem. This is a short poem. And this one I just wanna read because I think it's beautiful. And then Mr. Composition's gonna come up. Um, shout out to you guys watching on YouTube. Thanks, subscribe, turn on notifications. I wanna make more messages directly to YouTube. So anyway, here's this poem. There's nothing between here and the sky let in by windows blowing on the carpet and in my heart. I'm living like dying to be in love, but never in love with life. I could never want this, that's why I create art. To have cushions on the ceiling for when I forget how to be on earth and attempt to crash into the sky. A little artistic piece. What's up, dudes? Okay, right now we're gonna jump straight in. We're in Corpus Christi right now. We're gonna jump straight into city by the sea. The sparkling city by the sea, Corpus Christi, the sparkling city, the sparkling gang. I'm gonna give it to Mr. Composition. Spark, spark. I think you gotta turn the volume up on the mixer oh, yeah, yeah. the laptop. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. This is Mr. Composition, the MC that writes fiction. Let me get the levels all gravy. Let's you can just see. press play all. <laughs> So, all right, so before I get into my set, I am Mr. Composition MC that writes fiction. Um, I have my first work of fiction, Ideas of Illusion, which is a psychological thriller that takes place in the year 2020.